In this video, I'm going over the best Rocket League settings updated to 2024. The reason this is so important is because there are a lot of guides out there, but not many are updated and even fewer aren't just a single pro or a single person saying, I use this and I like this and uh, you should use this. Too. So in this video, I'm going to take you through my five step settings setup process where I break down everything you need to change with your settings with recommended ranges, rules, and guidelines as we go based on the latest pro data from Liquipedia. So what I recommend you do is open up Rocket League and follow along with me so we build the best settings for you as you go. Or you can just copy and paste the middle setting in every recommended range I give you, whatever you want to do. And if you're new here and wondering, oh, who are you and why should I listen to you? The reason you should listen to me is because I'm a Grand Champ 3 player, but I've been coaching for the last five years. I actually run Rocket League's largest coaching company at the GrandChampBootCamp.com. And the reason I give away all the secrets and everything we do in there for free, because I hope that you can use this free content and rank up by yourself to Diamond. That way you qualify and me and my team can work with you to get to Champ and beyond. If you have questions as we go, we have a Discord called the GrandChampBootCamp.com free edition with over 50,000 members, and it's completely free to join and you can leave whenever you want. So click the first link down below if you have questions as we go. You can drop them there and let's talk settings. Step number one, camera settings. I'm gonna go through each setting, explain what it does, and give you a recommended range. First, FOV. FOV stands for field of view or field of vision. And basically all that means is how much of the field you can see on the edges. Higher is better because you see more and 110 is ideal. Camera distance controls the distance from the back of your car to the camera. And meta range for this most common setting is 260 to 280. But if you wanna be standard, I would say 270 is kind of the gold standard here. Height has changed over the last few years. Since camera height controls how high up or down the camera is and the closer you are to the car, the more precise you can kind of be. What we've seen in the past couple of years is a trend down and the meta range is probably 90 to 100. Freestylers are an extreme here. Some will go as low as 60 to 80, but for competitive play, I use 100 and I recommend 90 or 100. Camera angle is how angled down the camera looks. Zero is flat straight ahead. Negative 10 is very tilted down. Now, the further you drop height, the further you drop that previous setting, the further I recommend you drop angle. The reason for this is because angle compensates for height. So to give you an example, normally negative three to negative five is pretty standard. But if you're going to go super low on height, let's say you're going to go down to 80 on height, you can go down to negative six or negative seven on angle and it will still work. Now, do I recommend this? No, I think standard is still negative three to negative five. I personally use 100 and negative four. But if you want to go lower, as far as I would recommend you go is as low as 90 and negative five for height and camera angle, respectively. Stiffness controls how much your camera moves when you accelerate, and this setting has also changed over the last few years. Back when I made my first settings guide three, four years ago, some pros like Lethemir, for example, would go as high as 2.0. The reason this is less common is because what stiffness does is it controls how much the camera zooms out and zooms in when you accelerate or decelerate, respectively. And so the sort of new school, younger, more mechanical pros are tending towards lower stiffnesses down in the 0.3 or the 0.4 ranges. My theory on this is because at the highest levels, Rocket League is so fast, stiffness is better to be low because that way, when you're rotating in a fast paced lobby, the camera will zoom out, allowing you to gather more information while you grab boost or watch the play. Then when the play slows down, you get a nice zooming effect where you can be very close to the ball. And this helps with precise first touches when you're trying to be slow, particularly in the air. Point is some pros are going as low as 0.3 to 0.4. I'd recommend recommend for average players, middle range is still viable, 0.4 to 0.6. But like with height, this setting has been moving down over time. So you can bring it down to the bottom end of that range, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, if you really want a change. Camera swivel speed. What this controls is how quickly your camera will move when you push your right stick around. This is preference, and there's a massive range here, but I personally prefer this higher because I want to be able to flick my joystick and not have to hold it down to quickly gather information. And the more information you have in Rocket League, generally the better decisions you're going to make. So I play on the high range, but really all the settings 1.0 to 2.0 are fast and fine. Camera transition speed controls how quickly the ball cam and car cam swaps. So lower will have a smoother, slower animation and higher will have a snappier animation. Some pros like AppJack play very high 
transition speeds. And you'll notice that when they switch ball cam on and off, the camera cuts fast. I've seen some pros go as high as 2.0 or 1.8 or 1.9, but I'd say for most players, you want somewhere in the middle. Anywhere from one to two works, lower for newer players who kind of want it to be smoother, higher if you're super fast and mechanical and you want it to be fast. At the end of the day, it's preference though. Anything one to two is valid. Step two, moving on to controller settings and sensitivity. For steering sensitivity, I want to preface by saying I use a high sensitivity because what steering sensitivity is, is like aim sensitivity in shooters. And I usually play on very high sense, so I enjoy high steering sensitivities. However, for most of you watching, I don't recommend you use this high because the lower rank you are, the more I would prioritize control and consistency over just speed of your car switching around. But I would say start between 1.0 and 1.4. Many of the most mechanical pros like Ocalid still use 1.3 and 1.3, and that's a very common configuration. Just as many use 1.4 and 1.5. But after that, the amount of people that use very high sensitivities declines. Most pros are in that kind of 1.3 to 1.5 range. There's a smaller subset in the 1.5 to 2.0. And then there's a few outliers that go 2.0, 3.0, and beyond. But most players find the best results between 1.3 and 1.5. Go higher if you want, if you're a weirdo like me, but I wouldn't really recommend that on anyone. Aerial sensitivity, same thing. This is just going to control how quickly your car pitches in the air, which from my understanding is less important. Redditors, correct me in the comments as I know you will. I think when you air roll, aerial sensitivity doesn't matter, but I just put it on the same thing I have my steering sensitivity. So I'd recommend you do the same. 1.3 to 2.0 is the most common range that pros are using for what it's worth. And then the last two controller settings, which are actually very important, dead zone. Dead zone controls how far you need to push your joystick for the game to register a movement. And you don't wanna have to push it very far for your car to start turning, for example. So most pros will use anywhere from 0.05 to 0.10 with 0.05 being the most common, but there are tons in between that work. Remember, lower is going to feel faster here. Now for dodge dead zone, this setting controls how far you need to push your joystick for the game to register a flip in that direction. To avoid accidentally backflipping when you're going for double jump aerials, most players like to use high dodge dead zones. Anywhere from 0.5 to 0.8 is most common, and I personally use 0.6. So anywhere in that range should be playable. Just remember, dodge dead zone is personal. And the truth is, most of Rocket League is personal. For example, have you ever wondered if these settings are right for you or if this is what you need at your rank? If so, chances are you might not need more YouTube tutorials. What you might need is one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's why I started the Grand Champ Bootcamp Unlimited. It's a place where 18 plus players ranked platinum and above like you can actually work live one-on-one -on -one with pro coaches. Currently, we've got 72 of 120 spots left available. So if you want to get started, DM my team discount Discord account with the keyword set to see if you qualify. I'll have my team Discord account first link in the description below. That's keyword set for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Now onto the controller binds. Step number three, select the correct controller binds and change from the default because for some reason, the default controller binds, well, one, they suck, and two, they don't even include some of the controls you need like air roll left or air roll right. So follow these steps to change off the default and then you can sort of run free from there and do whatever you wanna do. This is like my hyper condensed quick start controller binds guide. Number one, boost. Move your boost away from the face buttons somewhere to the back. I recommend a bumper or a trigger. Having boost on the back of your controller isn't necessarily better, but in my opinion, it's more optimal because boost is a button you want to hold down. So you want one finger to be dedicated for it. Whereas the face buttons here, these are better suited for controls that you need to click on and off. Think ball cam, think jump. Keybinds you're going to be holding or pressing down for extended periods of time just make more sense to have on the back of your controller from an efficiency and thumb fatigue standpoint. Oh my God. I dropped out of college and I'm talking about thumb fatigue. Anyways, <laughs> number two, drift. We want to change our drift control, ideally to a bumper or just a different button. This makes it easier to control power slides. And I recommend you put this on a button that you can press easily because when you get to step number three, you're going to be pressing this button a lot. Step number three, bind air roll, joystick air roll that is, and drift to the same button. For me, I use R1 for both drift and air roll. And this simplifies controls because air roll only happens in the air and power slide aka drift only happens on the ground so you can bind them to the same button for smoother recoveries and to free up more space on the controller step number four bind air roll right or air roll left 
for some reason, I don't know why, arrow left or arrow right is not bound by default. If you don't have at least one of these, you're going to be left behind. Finally, take ball cam toggle, set this to something that's easy to reach. I recommend triangle or something on the face buttons that you can toggle and you can keep jump and the rest of the stuff on default is usually fine. That's like the bare minimum. And if you follow those steps, your controls won't be terrible or put differently, your settings will at least be playable. Now, if you want to get more into the weeds or you have controls that go against those recommendations I just gave you, that's okay. The house isn't on fire. Just as a general guideline, we want to try to make it so that all of the four most important inputs, the four things that I talked about first there, we want to make it so that each of those buttons has their own assigned finger. And apart from that, as much as you can, try to put the most important buttons that you're using. So your jumps and your air rolls on stuff that's easily accessible for you. On to step four, interface. Number one, nameplate scale. This was added a few years ago. And what it controls is the size of the name tags in game. Now, since information is so important and sometimes players are far away in Rocket League, there's a lot of distance. I recommend you put nameplate scale on 200%, just max it out. That way you can see people from a distance. Not only that, but now with the new update where you can see teammate boost meters. If you increase the nameplate skill, you also make it easier to read how much boost your teammate has. More information, better decisions, max nameplate scale. That's my recommendation. Second interface setting that I do think is important is ball arrow. Make sure this is turned on. I believe it is by default and some people say to turn it off, but I don't understand why. Because once again, this is just a setting that gives you more information and it's never bad to have more information about where the ball is, especially if you're rotating or the ball's overhead or it just gets pinched best to have ball arrow on. And once you get those two settings, the final and fifth most important section is video settings, because this is what will influence 80% of the performance benefits you're going to get when you play Rocket League. So if you're playing for ranked play, my video settings checklist to get the max FPS and smoothest game. First off, take the display resolution, set it to your monitor and play full screen. If you don't play full screen, you might introduce input lag. This isn't always the case, but full screen generally has the lowest input lag for most settings. Setups. Meaning, if you're playing on full screen, the time it takes for the game to register when you press a button and the time you actually press the button, it's going to be the shortest. So you're going to get the best response times. That's why we play with full screen mode on. Second, to minimize input lag further, we're going to take VSync and turn this shit off. I don't know why VSync is on on anybody's PC. I've never heard it help somebody, at least in a ranked game. Like no matter what video game I'm playing, the first thing I do, I don't even have to know anything about the game. I just take VSync and I turn it off. Somebody correct me in the comment section about who benefits from vsync maybe i'm crazy and when it comes to rocket league settings we're going to put render detail on max so that way you can have crisp pixels you can you know see the ball moving around the field even from a distance but everything else we're going to set to low shaders effects blah blah blah. all of it has basically just been decided is a distraction at the highest levels of play and so by turning this down you're going to get the best performance and there's really no competitive edge to having you know more goal explosions or lens flares it doesn't help. And with that, you are now set for ranked play. But if you want a full list with all the settings, not just the basics that I talked about today, I highlight a few more secret settings in my 21 settings list that I just finished recording. Click the video here to see the 21 settings you need to change if you still have questions after watching this, and I'll see you there. As always, thanks for watching.